I'll also double check as well. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. So. Thank you for the introduction. So again, my name is Carol. I came from Florida. Um, I flew in yesterday. Yes, my arms are tired, but I rested. Thank you for asking. Um, so a little bit about me. I spent about 20 years out in the field in Central Florida in the Daytona Beach area. I started off in ambulance transport and went into the fire service. I was an engineer medic. Today I work for Zoll. I do the buttonology of the devices. So um, I want to thank you guys for giving me your time and attention today. And um, for those of you that have never used a Zoll device. I sat in the same place you all did. I used a life pack almost my entire career until the tail end and then had to switch. Change can be a little hard sometimes, but um, I think once you sit through this training, I feel like you guys are going to probably see it's a lot easier than what you may have expected. So that's my goal today, is to get you guys comfortable. I do have a couple of rhythm generators that I'm going to be dispersing. We may have to group up because this is a larger group. Um, in order for you guys to practice the energy delivery. And if we need to stay you know, after and break out into sessions, we can do so as well, as long as time permits. Any questions for me before we get started? Okay, has anybody used this device before? For those of you that have your hands up, did you get Zoll training or here you go, figure it out? How? Okay, understood. All right, fair enough. So we are going to start with the outside of the device. We'll take a tour around the outside, and then we'll get into the buttons. I did keep the batteries out for now intentionally. So we're going to start with your vital signs pouch. So that left main pouch, if you guys could open it up, take everything out of there. All right, so if we take a peek all the way up at the top, you guys are going to see where your four lead connects to. And if you follow that out to where the colored wires separate, that's where your 12 lead is going to get hooked into. Your 4 lead, 12 lead, those go on the same way you've always been used to putting them on. There's nothing different about that. Just below that, you guys are going to find your pulse ox. Your pulse ox is made by Massimo. A couple of things with your pulse ox, you have a couple of tools in your toolbox. Number one, you've got your oxygen saturation. And then below that number, when we go to turn these on, you guys will see what I'm talking about. Below that number, you guys are going to get carbon monoxide as well as something called perfusion index. So if you open up your pulse box, you should have those black wings. Yep, those black wings are your carbon monoxide. And then that other thing I was telling you about, that perfusion index, that's a nice little tool. So if you're wondering, hey, are my patient's sats low because it's cold outside, or are they really low? This is going to help you out. So you're looking for a number of one or greater. That is going to tell you you have good perfusion through that site that you picked, and you can, you can probably trust those numbers there. It gives you more assurance that you can trust those numbers. So one or greater <coughs> perfusion index, and that will be below. Those number, numbers will cycle through at the bottom of your oxygen saturation. If you're having difficulty getting a reading, the manufacturer recommends the patient's non-dominant ring finger. Otherwise, just put it wherever you guys are used to, wherever you guys are comfortable. All right, moving down from there, you have a blood pressure hose. This is a threaded connection. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about blood pressure because it is a little different in its technology. So I see the cables, but um, I don't see the hoses connected to it or the other piece to the cuff connected. Okay, so each cuff comes with that little pigtail. You really only need one. So what we're going to do for now is we're going to find the blood pressure cuff and you're going to connect that pigtail together to the cable. So it's just a simple twist. No cuff? No. Oh, how about on the outside pouch? Oh, it's in the far outside. Oh, that's bad. Oh, it's like a treasure hunt this morning. <laughs> got to get got to eat 10 o'clock. So. Uh, 
So you'll see that each of your cuffs have has that pigtail. You're only going to need one. My recommendation is you take the extra pigtails, hide them somewhere. Um, you don't need that many. You just need the one set. Um, make, sometimes services would like to have a backup just in case. That's fine. But you're going to be changing your cuff from the actual cuff. So there's that little knob that attaches to the cuff. You're going to just gently squeeze that and pull and that will allow you to switch out the cuffs. It's a lot easier than coming down by the pigtails at the bottom. Can you guys just kind of be my eyes since I've got my back there so I'm not blocking it? <laughs> okay, so I just want to get back to the blood pressure cuff and you guys want me aiming it towards this way, correct? So that they can see over there, right? So it's gonna be backwards for you guys. I'm not gonna be able to, I will turn it around so you guys can see as well, but for everybody that's on Zoom, this is the part that we were talking about that we want to connect and disconnect from. And this is the area we would want to avoid because this plastic is really thin. If you guys do decide that you need to disconnect these because you need to clean it, just understand, just put it back wherever you think it's going to go. The monitor is going to figure it out on its own. The reason I say that is because the technology inside of here, you're going to notice two sides to the tubing. So one is going to push and pull air, the other side is going to listen kind of like a stethoscope. That helps us to get blood pressures most of the time in under 15 seconds. It can accomplish that by taking the blood pressure on the way up. If it can capture it that way, great, we get a fast blood pressure. If it can't, it'll take it on the way down where you get a blood pressure in the same amount of time you guys are waiting today. Any questions about that? Okay, we can help the system out to get those faster blood pressures with three simple things. Number one, you want the cuff as close to bare skin as possible. Number two, if you open up your blood pressure cuff, you're gonna see the white artery line marker. You want that to follow the patient's artery line. And then when you close the cuff around the patient's arm, you're gonna see a little arrow in these goal posts here. You're gonna want the arrow to be inside the goal post. And let me just switch this around so you guys can see as well. Just like that, you want it inside the goalpost. So it is important that we're sizing these cuffs up the right way. Um, so that way you guys are not struggling to get these blood pressure readings and the machine isn't struggling to get them. So again, those are your sizes. The other thing that this does that's a little different or unique, so if, if the machine is struggling to get a blood pressure reading and you place the patient onto the four lead, they're gonna talk to each other. It does that by syncing to the patient's R wave and it'll go, okay, I should hear a beat here, here, here. Let's ignore the noise in the background to help you get a blood pressure reading when it's struggling. Any questions about that? So the two takeaways from that, blood pressure on the inflation most of the time, pretty fast in under 15 seconds. And then the other part is sinking to the R wave to help you get a more enhanced blood pressure reading if you guys are struggling. You don't need the four lead on to get the fast blood pressure. You just need to size the cuff up the right way. Moving down from there, you guys are going to find capnography. It's the little door that sits from side to side. Is this the same? Are you guys using that same system, Iridian, the disposable system today? Okay, perfect. Beneath that, there is a little port. You won't have to touch it. You won't have to do anything with it. It's simply the exhaust system to the capnography. That's all that it is. You have your printer door inside of here. So that black hinge door is a deflector. If you lift it up, you're going to find the printer door. This is simply a roll of paper. That's all that it is, is a roll of paper. You're going to see that the paper feeds up on the top of the monitor like this. When you go to tear your paper, you want to hold it straight to the ceiling. You don't want to tear it to the side. You want to go straight up to the ceiling and to the back to avoid those paper jams. There is no ink inside this device. Okay, so there's a right way and a wrong way to hang this paper. There's a picture inside the door. It's just a roll of paper. 
but if you put it in backwards and you don't follow the picture, <coughs> it's not going to print because this is a thermal print. Okay? No ink in the device. So if you go, man, send this thing back to Boston, it's not working, it's out of, out of ink, it's because your paper's in backwards. Any questions about that? Okay, I'm going to switch this around to your critical care side. And in your critical care side, all the way up to the top, there's a little USB connection. This is for software updates. This is to move data. So your MiFi's will be connected into there. And then you have your multifunction cable. So this multifunction cable has this little white triangle on the end. There's also one in the device. If you ever need to disconnect this to clean it, you're going to line those both back up and you're going to push. And then I like to just lock it into place by turning that red dial to the back. The very end of this has a gray adapter with a black button. If you press that black button and pull, you're going to end up with a red piece that says this side up. There is a little test box that's attached to your cable. It also says this side up. At some point during your checkout, we're going to ask you to connect the two together. You'll run it up to 30 joules and you'll deliver. When you're done, it is really important that you disconnect this and you put the gray adapter back on. If you leave them connected, it's going to give you an error message that says short detected. So always disconnect and put your gray adapter back on. Yes? When you're putting it into the, the test load piece, is it supposed to click in or is it just kind of pressure fit? Okay. Yeah, just it just fits in. Okay. There's no click. Any questions about your vital signs pouch or your critical care side? Okay. We'll move to the back of your monitor. The back of your monitor has stretcher hooks up at the top. You have a padded shoulder strap. You have a little pigtail back here. This is so you guys can plug into the wall, so that little pigtail sticking up. That's so you guys can plug into the wall. The wall adapters are all along the sides of the rooms there. For every minute that it sits on charge, you guys will get a minute of runtime off of there as well. I'm not sure what the plan is, if you guys are intending to leave these plugged in all day, or if you guys have thought about that yet. We're plugged in, so I think we tend to leave them. I mean, at least for right now, we have options to leave them. Okay. So that's okay. One thing I just want you guys to keep in mind is these batteries are sealed lithium ion batteries. So these things need to visit a base charger at some point. Okay. So your department will come up with a rotational schedule and there's a base charger up front here. It'll have to visit that base charger whenever that rotation is. Okay. The reason for that is even if this sits here full, it doesn't mean that it's going to get a recondition. And the only way to keep the cells inside this battery going and functioning properly is to visit the base charger on a regular basis. So if it needs a recondition, it can achieve that. Otherwise, the cells inside the battery can begin to die. Okay, so really important that we rotate these. So to check your battery, there's a circle on the front. If you press that and release, the more green that you have, the better. If you press and release and the red X stays lit, you want to take it out of service and let somebody know. If you press and release and the question mark stays lit, that means it hasn't visited a base charger in a really long time and it needs a recondition. The runtime on here is pretty impressive. If you guys just ran an everyday kind of a call and you didn't deliver any kind of energy, you could get eight to 10 hours off of a full battery. Any questions? Plus. Thank you.
Okay. Got quite, you said they need to be um, every so often yep. calibrated or reconditioned. Just placed into the base charger and it will handle the recondition if necessary. It'll do, it's a smart battery, so if it needs it, it'll do it. But if it just sits on a shelf somewhere and we're like, oh, it's full, it's no problem, and it never has an opportunity to get a recondition, that's where it could become a problem down the road. Okay. We don't want to leave it for months and months on end you know, like that without ever visiting a base charger. So that's something you guys can discuss later um, and, and figure out a rotational schedule for. Okay, any questions about the back of the device or your battery? Okay, so for those of you who have never used this device before, let's turn this around so you guys can see your screen. And I'm just going to clean up a little bit here. All right, so for those of you who have never used this device before, let's make this a little easy. The green button up at the top is your on off button. Everything on the right hand side, that's got a picture on it. So help me out. Today's my first day at Zoll. I see a picture that has a bell on it. What does that do? Alarms. Alarms. It's an important button because it makes things quiet. What about the house? Yep. Takes you home. You have navigation keys that go clockwise, counterclockwise. The circle is going to be your enter or select key. The camera that takes a picture, it saves it into your album so you can retrieve it later. That's your record button. Then you have your blood pressure button down at the bottom. Everybody good so far? Okay. On the opposite side of the device, those buttons don't have any pictures. We're going to think of these as apps on our phone. So if you guys have smartphones, I'm sure you have multiple apps on your phone, and you can scroll through the different pages. This is going to have a little back arrow or boomerang key that's going to allow you to scroll through the different apps. And I'm going to refer to these as the apps on my phone because when we turn this on, Whatever the icon is, is the button push that we're going to get or the app that we'll get into when we turn this on. Down at the bottom, you have all your energy. You have a pacer. You have an a analyze for an AED. You have number one, energy select. Number two, charge. And number three is your shock button. This device has a two-minute internal battery inside every time we turn this off. We have two minutes to keep it on the current case. So if you need to swap batteries out, it's got a two minute internal battery inside. Every time we turn this on, it's gonna run through an operational test. It's gonna check your printer, it'll check the device. The only thing it doesn't check is that defib cable that we checked out at some point during the day. Any questions about that? If for some reason you needed to switch to a new case inside that two minutes and so you turn it off and turn it back on, is there a way to do that? Yes. There is. You, you can physically turn, uh, close the case out and begin a new one. There's a button push. You're welcome. So do you guys all see the Ghostbusters or no smoking symbol up at the corner there? This is your ready for use indicator. It's up at the top on the right hand side. If you happen to see this when the device is on running off of the battery source, you're going to get a message in the center of your screen. You'll want to pay attention to that and take it out of service. Any questions? Okay, let's go ahead and put the batteries in. So we do have a pretty large class and I still have the Zoom that I also want to be attentive to as well. So I'm going to ask for a little bit of help from you guys today. If you guys can please stay on the same button pushes as me, this will help just so that I can monitor both sides. I know it's tempting, um, but that would be really helpful. So thank you for that. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on, green button up at the top. It's going to run through that operational test where the lights are going to pop up on the top. It's also going to check our printer. <coughs> Does somebody have a yellow light flashing on the top of their device right now? We do, yeah. Okay. What does the yellow message say? Does it say printer door open? Yes. Okay. So how do we make that quiet? Door. Yeah, pr printer door, or if we're busy and we can't get to it, what, what else can we press besides the off button? The alarm button. The alarm button, very good. So 
What this is doing is it's triggering an equipment alarm. So that's a yellow light, yellow message, just to kind of say, hey, pay attention to this. It's something you can fix. The electrodes came off, the pulse ox came off, the printer door is open, something equipment related that I can fix. Any questions about that? Okay. We talked about your home button. I'm going to pass out some rhythm generators. I don't have a ton. I am, the screen's really grainy. I don't know that they're going to see off of mine. So I, I'm going to pass these to you guys. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do for those of you that get a rhythm generator, and I don't, I don't know who should get one or who wants one, I will pass them out. Um, but please pass. Please go ahead and put your four lead on. Um, Here, we have one more coming. You do? Okay. So four lead, and if you guys kind of want to look together to see what's happening. So, do we Carol, does my star symbio not work with this? We yes. have just, these don't. No, the connection is different. Yeah, it's all to this connect. Um, so I think, don't quote me on this, but I've heard that you can ask for a different piece okay. and get the connections for that. And just to, because those are expensive. They are. That's why, that's yeah. why I keep them in my office. They're expensive. All right. So is anybody having a difficult time with their rhythm generator turning on? I only have three. Should we use this connection? Not yet. Yep, not yet. Just the four lead. So if you're getting a message that says check sensor, it's maybe because somebody put the pulse ox on and maybe then set it down on the table. Yeah. So that's an event. If you put it back on again and then take it off again, it's a new event. So if you're like, why isn't this stopping? I hit the alarm button. That's why. It's because every time we do this, it'll create a new event. But that's okay. Why don't you guys put the pulse ox on so you can see what I'm talking about? So you'll see when you put the pulse ox on, your uh, oxygen saturation up at the top. And then below that, it'll take a little bit longer, but you'll get that PI number. Can you guys remind me of what the perfusion index number should be? One, one. one or greater. And then you'll get carbon monoxide right underneath that. Everybody see that? Okay. Just remember, if you go to take your pulse ox back off, just remember, be prepared to hit the alarm silence button. Okay, so your home button. Your home button will take you home, but it actually will give you three different screens. So go ahead and press your home button one time. You're going to get a list of vital signs trending. And go ahead and press your home button one more time, and you're going to go to my favorite screen, which is a large numeric display. So to recap, you're going to get three screens. One is going to be your waveform. Number two is going to be a vital signs trending window. And number three is large numbers. Everybody good? Home button one more time to bring us to our waveform. And I want you guys to pick an arrow, it doesn't matter which one, and start pressing it. And as we press this, what color does the cursor turn every time you press it? Blue. Blue. So I know it's early, and not to be cheesy, but here's how I remember it. Anything you can highlight blue, there's something you can do. That means you guys can customize your device for the duration of the call. So I'm working with you guys today. And we get dispatched to a 70-year-old female patient in cardiac arrest. When we get on scene, we realize 
there is a language barrier. This is a seven-year-old in cardiac arrest. I need to make this a pediatric device. Anything I can highlight blue, there's something I can do. I'm going to use my navigation keys to go to adult. Press the enter key. I get a drop down that says adult, pediatric, and neonate. If we change it to pediatric, we change three things on the device. The air pushing and pulling through the blood pressure cuff. 42 different alarm parameters in the background. And then we take our initial jewel settings, more importantly, down to 50 to start. Let's switch it back to adult. Do you guys have any long transport times? No. Not really. No? So no need for auto BPs. We'll still do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah, still do it? We yeah. do. Okay. Anything you can highlight blue, there's something you can do. Let's go over to NIBP. Press the enter key. You'll get a menu. Use your navigation keys to go to NIBP mode. Press enter. Use your arrow to find the word auto. Press enter. And now you can scroll one down to the interval, press enter, and you can select how often you would like your blood pressure readings. One minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you guys like. Can you say that one more time? Start turbo cuff? Start turbo cuff, but you gotta say it with some home. Oh. <laughs> Because it sounds really cool. Did anybody else notice turbo cuff? Yeah. yeah. How cool does that sound? <laughs> it is, it's going to make your patient miserable. Please stay away from turbo cuff. It's going to take as many blood pressures as it can in a five minute window. This is great. Where's David Bull? So if you're wondering, it does, we don't make any cuffs that go around the neck, so that's out. There. Is there a way to set the auto pressures up to be automatic as soon as you turn the device on? The actual pressures? Yeah, I, I know most of us are divas and don't have to push buttons to get repeating pressures every five or ten minutes. You know? So you want it to be auto in automatic mode? Yes. It can power up that way. It's a configuration. Okay. So it's, it's just a configuration um, that you're... I'm sure that decision will come from management, but I know that's what we currently run, and I think we're all pretty used to it. Yeah, so here's one thing I'll caution with that, with this particular device. If you guys, say, for instance, turn it on, and you set the blood pressures to every five minutes, and you turn it on, but you never take the cuff out, and it's still sitting in the bag, guess what's going to happen in five minutes? It's going to create a big mess. So... Just keep that in mind. I don't know what works best for you guys, but I just want you guys to be aware of that. Is there a way to have it cycle every five minutes after the first one's initiated by the provider? No. I would love that. Our old device did. Um, that is not something this current one does at this time. But if they decide to update that with the ability to upgrade the software to the USB, it's something that could be done. If they did, yeah, and, and I don't know how that process works or if that's even on the radar right now. So yeah. It will only take a blood pressure if you don't set the time when you push the button. Okay. It has two options to take a blood pressure. Either I press the blood pressure button and I take one manually with a manual button push, or I set it to do auto blood pressures and I create an interval. But you have to set it. But you it have to set it. It's, it's automatic like every three and every It five. can be programmed that way. Currently, it is not programmed that way. Okay. Yes? So every time the monitor gets turned off, it goes back to manual? Correct, at this time. Okay. Yep. If they set it up to be auto, it'll just pop up on its own whether you use it or not. I'm trying to digest all this. Okay. <laughs> See, so just to make sure I understood that correctly, yeah. we can't program these devices so that when we turn them on, it's going to automatically cycle every five minutes. Is that right? We you can. can. You can. You can. But the caution that I throw out there is if somebody turns it on and forgets the, that they have it on and decides they don't need a blood pressure right away, and the blood pressure cuff is sitting inside the device at five minutes, regardless of whether it's on an arm or not, it's going to inflate. They can manually override it by hitting the blood pressure button and shutting it off.
but it's just something to keep in mind. We can program them to be auto. So I, I think I would like it programmed to be every five minutes, assuming sure. that we're going to get the blood pressure cuff on a majority of our patients. 99% uh, of the time within that first five minutes, exception to maybe DOAs and cardiac arrest. Okay. We can do that ourselves though, right? Well, we can, what I'll do is I'll, with your permission, I'll program it to power on in automatic mode. You said every five minutes? Yes. Every five minutes. So let me just bring you guys back for just a second. Since we're going to be changing the configuration file to where it is going to be powering on in automatic mode, I want you guys to be mindful that at five minutes it's going to just start to inflate. If you need to disarm it, the blood pressure button is your override button. Okay? okay. So that will disarm it. If you want to take them more frequently for some reason, you can press the blood pressure button and that is another way to override as well, to take them more frequently. Does that make sense to everybody? When you disarm it, does that mean that automatically, when it, the next time that monitor gets turned on, it'll automatically go back to that every five minutes? It's just going to cancel that one reading the out. One reading. Okay. Just the one reading. And then at five minutes, it'll try to take one again okay. at another five. But yes. We want no. So, so uh, this might be stupid. What's smart cuff? Smart cuff is where we're syncing to the R wave. That's a great question. That's where we're syncing to the R wave with the four lead, where it says, okay, I hear a beat here, here, here. I'm going to ignore the noise in the background to help you out. Does that answer your question? Um, so, how, what does it do for the blood pressure? I'm not quite sure what you Yeah, mean. so if the machine is struggling to get a blood pressure, yes. maybe you guys are bouncing down the road and it's trying to distinguish a bump in the road oh, from a I beat. See. It can turn around and say, oh, okay, I have the patient on the four lead. I'm going to sync to that R wave and only pay attention to that. Okay, I understand. Yep. You guys have questions Does over it here. Does work with the pulse ox too? Like the, the smart cuff? No, smart cuff only works off of the four lead. And I've got one more question up here and then I'll get to you. So if we change the interval, so we're going to make it five minutes. Yep. But if we decide we want it every three minutes or whatever, and we change it on that patient, when we turn it off and it comes back on, it's going to be every five minutes again. I think that's Correct. Okay. Correct. Whatever the configuration file is, after the device is off for two minutes, it goes back to the configuration file, to the master configuration file. And then you had a question in the back. You were so patient. That's okay. So the, the auto cuff will be every five minutes. If we manually cycle one, between those, will that trigger the next five minute timer or is it still going to go at its? Still going to go at the five. Okay. Any other questions at all? So we talked about turbo cuff, we talked about smart cuff, we're going to change this to autos and we know how to override a reading. Is everybody with me? Okay. If you could please, for the sake of training, go back to NIBP mode and switch it to manual. The reason we're doing that is so that, I'll get to you in just a second, so that it doesn't inflate and deflate during training. Yes, sir. So that little... At the, at the bottom of the blood pressure menu, there's a scale that goes to 300. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the inflation. Yeah, that's what you need to know about. How to turn it on. What? <laughs> it's, just, it's just the blood pressure inflation. It's already set in the background um, for the adult patient. Okay, so it's already set. It's already set. There's nothing you guys will have to do with it. So is, is everybody on manual mode right now for their blood pressure? Is anybody still in automatic mode? Okay. All right. Go ahead and hit your home button. Do you guys have a need to put multiple leads on your device? Like, for instance, in my, where I work at, in my city, I have to do an assistily protocol where I have to confirm in two or more leads. Do you guys have anything like that to where you would need to add leads? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by the question. So we, um, we can add multiple leads on the device. For, do you guys do anything like for, that? For screen viewing, you mean? Um, for screen viewing or for, for like me, if I have a... a patient who's dead on arrival and I need to confirm in two or more leads for a systole, I have to add two leads. Do you guys have anything like that here? No? For a systole, we do. What? Not for a systole. 
or for anything to where you would need more than more than two more than one lead on the screen. Are we asking about the on screen setup? Yes. Not the setup, just to where somebody can manually come in and add. Is there a need for you guys to do that at all? Yeah, I would like to be able to see multiple leads on the screen, but I would also like to understand what would go away if I add that lead. Yeah, so my recommendation is when you guys are powering on, leave it at a single lead. The reason for that is the vitals will stay nice and large down at the bottom. The more we put on the screen, it's going to push the vital signs over to the right, make them a little smaller. Okay, we can hold up to four different waveforms on the screen. So we want to make sure that you know we have the important stuff on there. Capnography will override anything, um, and then you'll always have your top lead, and then your CPR feedback will be at the bottom as well. Okay, so if you guys don't have like a protocol that requires you to put things in two or more two or more leads, then you guys are good. You guys should be good to go with that. Is that are, are we okay or do I need to? Is that a configuration that we can change later? If we yeah, you can, the but there's also a manual. So, for instance, if I was in my, in my state, if I was working in Florida right now, and I came on somebody who is a systole, and I, my, my protocol requires me to confirm in two or more leads, I would go over to pads, which would now be really lead two because it switches over when you place them on the four lead. <coughs> I would go down to insert, and I would put lead three up there. Now I've got two, but that's only going to be for this call. So that way when I turn it on for the next one, it's not overly crowded. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. And then I can remove that as well by going down to remove. Everybody good? All right. The next button push is the camera. The camera is unique. The camera button is a record button, but it's also a back to the future button. So I'm sure we've all seen or heard of somebody who has seen a funky beat on the rhythm of the screen, and then you go, Doc, I swear it was there. Well, when you press this button push, it'll actually capture it as long as you're in the time frame. For those of you that have a rhythm generator, Pick a different rhythm and then press your camera button. How do I stop the printing? <laughs> Which button did you hit? The camera? Yeah. Um, you can hit the stop. roll of paper and it'll stop it, or you'll just wait and it'll stop on its own. Okay, for those of you that printed out your snapshot, if you guys can take a look at your printout, you should have a, you should have a camera symbol down at the bottom. The camera symbol is the exact moment that we press that snapshot key. Before the camera symbol is 12 seconds, and afterwards is another 12 seconds for a 24 second strip. Thank you very much. Did everybody get that? The camera symbol is your record button. If you look down at the bottom, you're going to see the camera symbol. Then you get 12 seconds before and 12 seconds after. So it's your back to the future and your record button. That'll give you a 24 second strip. Any questions? Everybody doing good? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Do you guys have any questions for me about any of the buttons on the right hand side? Let's recap really quick. If I see a yellow light on the top of my device, what is that telling me if it's flashing? 
something what kind? That we can fix. Something that we can fix. Something with your equipment that you can correct. How do we make it quiet? The alarms. The alarms. What if I get lost and I don't know how to get out of a screen? The home button. And which button is my record button? The camera button. The camera. Very good. Um, give me something you guys learned today about the blood pressure system. Anything. Don't put it around your patient's neck. Don't put it around your patient's neck. Fair enough. But talk to me about either the technology or sizing the cuff up. It can sometimes take it on the way up. And we can help that out by sizing the cuff up the right way. Remember, as close to bare skin as possible, line up the white artery line marker, and then make sure it's inside the goal post there. Everybody good with the right hand side? For those of you that have a 12 lead cable, or a 12 lead rhythm generator rather, find your 12 lead cable, connect to that please. Remember where it was at on this one? Yeah, it was on the left side. I don't see it there. No. No? Nope. It says eight Now, if you guys can stay with me on this part, this is going to be important because I want to make sure you guys get all the features that you guys can get on this 12 lead. So, number one, you're going to activate the 12 lead app by hitting 12. You're going to be able to see a live 12 lead in real time. So, if you guys are all in the same rhythm, you should see elevation in 2, 3, and AV up. So, the nice thing about this is there's no guessing about what the 12 lead picture is going to be like. What you see on the screen is what your printout will be. The next thing we're going to do is put age and gender in. So that second button push down, which is that little clipboard on the right hand side, or left hand side, sorry, that's going to pull up age and gender. You can change that using your navigation keys. So my understanding is, is you guys have to put a name in. Okay. For the sake of time, Please only put a first name in, and I want to show you a shortcut. So before you start, hang on just a second. Scroll down to first name, hit enter. You're going to get your alphabet. But if you take a look at the left-hand side, you're going to have a row up and down, a save key, and then you have your keys on the right-hand side as well. It takes practice, but with a bit of practice, I'm telling you, you'll get fast with this. But you should use two hands it'll make it quicker. So just a first name for today's training for the sake of time. When you're done, give me a thumbs up so I know we can move on. 
Okay. Oh, this is a con. A con. Let's go. Let's go. Other way. On. Then I go down. There you go. All right. So if you haven't already, please press the home key. And the home key will take you back to that original screen with that waveform for your 12 lead so you can see the 12 lead. And then just take a look at your picture if you like the picture. Press the 12 with the camera, please. When you press the 12 with the camera, you're going to get a brief stop sign. That's in case the patient starts to move. Then you can cancel the transmission. We're going to let it continue right now. At any point, can you add the patient's name and age later on if you want to get a real quick 12 read and can add that later on? You can, I believe, as far as your report goes, but if you're transmitting 12 leads to, to the hospital, for, for instance, and that 12 lead that you sent, you didn't put the name in, it won't show there. Yeah, she hit this. When you guys get to the double screen, stay right there for me, please, so I can show you guys what I what you guys have on your screen. While we're talking about 12 leads, we need to get on service tomorrow, similar to what we did with the Phillips. I'd like to get a 12 lead on every patient just so we increase our proficiency with the device and the navigation of the buttons. So if it's a patient that you don't think needs a 12 lead, please just tell them why you're doing it. We're requiring this for training for us. It's a new device. Would you mind if we get a 12 lead on you just to help us out? On your 12 lead printout, you guys have your interpretive statement, you have your numerical values, and then you have your 12 lead picture. At the end of that, this is an option, but we gave you guys 2, 3, and ABF in diagnostic mode. That can either stay or it can go away, depending on how much paper. A lot of paper. <laughs> a lot of paper. Same in the trees here. Have a question. Since this is thermal paper, if we do something like leave it on the windshield, it's going to turn black over time. Over time, yeah. Hey, Greg, can I ask you just to confirm if you have a patient that's BLS that you don't believe needs a 12 lead, you want us to get it anyway and explain why to the patient, right? Yeah, if that possibility exists, it doesn't hurt anything. Okay. Until we get proficient, you said tomorrow, until we get proficient. Right. Okay. And the EMTs are doing the 12 lead application and modern navigation the same as the paramedics. So. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at their printout? Okay, let's talk about what's on the screen. So, you guys are going to notice that you have the left side that's sitting still and the right side that's continuing in real time. So this allows us to take a look at the 12 lead printout on the screen and compare it to a real time 12 lead. So what we did is we took your printout, we tur turned it into a Kindle book reader on the left and then your real time on the right. The first page of your book is your interpretive statement. The purple arrow flips the page of the book. So if you press it once, you're going to get your STJ values, your access deviations. If you press it one more time, you're going to get a side-by-side -side view of the 12 lead you just took and the 12 lead continuing in real time. Everybody good? No? Hold on a second, I missed it. I hit the back button. That's okay. Are you reacquiring? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you reacquire and not have it? Uh, you can hit the roll of paper and it'll cancel the print but still acquire and save. So to recap really quick, that purple arrow is the page flipper. There is a blue circle just above that. That blue circle is your view changer. So the blue circle is going to allow you to toggle between your V leads and your limb leads. Are we good over here now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Yeah.
Do you guys have any questions for me on how to acquire a 12 lead, how to place a name inside the 12 lead, or how to flip through those double screens? Okay, 12 leads. If you forget everything that I said about 12 leads, remember one thing, the number 12. If you just follow the number 12 on this device and keep pressing it, you're gonna eventually acquire a 12 lead. It is important to put the age and gender in for the interpretive statement. It is very important to put that in there if your department requires that. All right. We are going to move on to 12 lead transmission. The roll of paper down at the bottom will give me another copy of the 12 lead that I just printed out if I need to hand over a copy to somebody else. Now we're going to go 12 lead transmission. So let me make sure my phone Wi Fi is on. I can't wait for that. All right, we're going to move in sections so that we can all get the 12 lead transmission. So I'm going to start with the left side of the room first. And then we'll get you guys on the right hand side to do this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down to the 12 with the envelope. When you go to the 12 with the envelope, you're going to pull up a list of the hospitals. Not all of them are in there just yet, but we're going to find the word test. So go down with your arrow until you find the word test. Press the enter key, and this is just for the left side of the room right now. We'll get to the right in just a moment. And then go down to transmit. Press enter. You guys should be getting a green light on the top of your monitor, letting you know that you're moving data. When it's done, you're going to get a confirmation that says 12 lead trans or 12 transmission complete in green. Now we're going to move over here to this side. I so this, my email is definitely there because my email just exploded. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was good. I'm excited. Just keep standing them right now. <laughs> we can change that for the rest of the training if you like. That's fine. So for this side of the room, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the envelope. We're going to scroll until we find the word test. Press the enter key and then go down to transmit and press enter. You're looking for a green light on the top of your device telling you that you're transmitting the data and you should get green transmission complete. And that's, that's how fast the hospitals are getting them. So you probably get a picture, you'll get a picture view of the 12 lead now. Yes. Can you do that if you already, like say, you click out of this 12 lead view, can you send the most recent 12 lead? Yes. That is actually where we're going to next. So that's a really good question. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show you guys where your archive is at. Do you guys have any questions for me on how to transmit? Go ahead and press your back arrow key. When you press your back arrow key, you're going to find a button that has a green check mark. That green check mark is all of your archive 12 leads. We hold a total of 32. We get rid of the oldest to make room for the newest. So you could go back and reprint or retransmit if you needed to. Any questions on how to access the archive? Okay. I, I just have a comment. So 32 to me doesn't seem like a high number, but Greg, since you're getting them all, are you going to save them somewhere or are you going to delete them? I was actually thinking about that. I, Historically, I've only saved the semis for the um, 
mission lifeline data, but I think with these I'm going to make a 12 week file and try and figure out how to catalog it. I would imagine when she's hooked up there. Thank you. Yes. Do these 12 leads go through the EMS charts? They should as long as the administrative privileges have been set to that. Yeah, I actually am working on the configuration for that right now. So when you like just access the um, the like the Ross number and you like unload all that stuff, will it come with it then or how does it come? So different from what we do now, um, on the activity log at the top you'll see a, a button that says EKG import. You can click on that button with the Zoll configuration and <coughs> deselect which items you want to import. So it'll be vital signs, add actions, uh, monitor readings. Uh, Carol, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if you push the picture button, it'll take a snapshot. It'll import that as well. How, how does it know that that's who, like, do you, how does the monitor know? Like, how do you know? How do you know it's not like which patient, you know? So, I understand your question now. Yeah. You'll see a catalog of, when you hit EKG import, you'll see a catalog of all the patients that are currently pending import, and you'll select that based on time. time. Okay. That makes it even more important to put a name here. Yeah, and, and, and I haven't seen it from Zoll, but I know on the physio side, it, whatever data you put in to identify the patient, mm -hmm. the PRID, or, or in, in the case of the monitor, it's a medical record number. Uh, the date, the time, and if the name is in there, the name, then you can pick that. The, okay. the name would be important for the assault leads for most patients can be time driven. Okay. And we can even identify each device by unit number or whatever. We can further identify. Yeah. Greg, did Carol? you say the snapshots do that too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, we noticed on the printout that Ross Westview is not printing out correctly. Okay. It's printing out. Ross View West. Sure. When it transmits to my email, it's coming across correctly. So I'm not sure why that would be, but just as we're playing with configuration, something yep. to keep your eye out for. Yes, we can. When we're wrapped up today, maybe we can sit down and. Perfect. perfect. Okay. All right. Very good. Any questions on your 12 lead? Your 12 lead archive? Okay. Two ways to get out of 12 lead, you either hit your home button or you hit your exit 12 button. We're going to exit out of 12. Capnography, I'm just going to talk about because if we press the button right now, it's just going to beep at us because we don't have anything attached to it. It's the same system you guys are using today. The only thing I'm going to emphasize is always work from your device first, patient last. So that orange piece that you guys have, it's a quarter to a half turn to the right on the vital signs side pouch. From there, this is a button push for an activation. So again, if I press the button right now, it's going to beep at me, but I hit the button push and then I attach it to my patient. So device connection, button push, patient. What would happen if we don't do it in that order? So you might get... You might get erroneous readings because you're introducing that into the line when the patient starts to breathe in. And that's not specific to Zoll, that's on any device. So it's kind of like a free air check before you put it on the patient. Yeah, so just make sure that this allows it to go through, it zeroes out on its own, and then attach it to the patient. Yeah. It does have a self-purging feature on the device as well. So if it senses something's coming close to that filter line, it will reverse the pump to try to clear it. If it can, great. It goes back to monitoring your patient. If it cannot, it's going to say that it's occluded. We're going to replace it at that time. Yes? So you're saying that's like purging liquids if they come close to the sensor? Say that again? Like, like is that purging like a liquid if it comes close to the sensor? Vomit, blood, whatever, whatever, maybe, whatever we see out in the field, right? right. When we're intubating. Um, that may start to come through. We've all seen that, I'm sure, or heard about it to where it could back up a little bit. I think we resolved that problem. Because of the filters. Yes. Yeah. So it's just something to keep in mind. If it senses that, it will reverse to try to clear it. If it can, great. If it can't, we'll replace that line. Okay. Any line? questions? Yes. When you, if you have to replace the line because it's clear, do you have to start it all over again manually? or would it, you know. I, I personally would. Okay. Um, that's just the habit I get into, but if your protocol is different or your 
department's different about doing that. That's just the way I would do it, is I would shut it off and, and run through that process again. Okay, we're gonna move down to the white cross. That white cross is just code markers. There's a total of 10. There's page one and page two. These are all customizable. We put a generic just event button in there so you guys could timestamp something quickly if you needed to. No, it does not. It does okay. not say add an event. It'll just timestamp it so it pulls into your EPCR and into your code summary. Your okay, trace so you have to use the code summary. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm going to hit my back arrow key. That back arrow key will take me out of my code markers. I'm going to skip the sync button for right now. I'm going to come back to it. The roll of paper just makes paper. That's all it does. It's just a start, stop, print. Which is my record button? Camera. The camera, very good. Hit your back arrow key. That very first button that's like that half eaten cookie up at the top, this is your contrast. It burns. <laughs> yes. We're going to skip the next couple of buttons. We're going to go down to log. Is everybody over at log right now? Okay. The very first button push, that clipboard, is the entire call. That's your treatment summary. So if you ever needed a hard copy of that, that's where we would access it. And you would just hit print? You would hit the roll of paper when you hit the enter key, yep. Go ahead and press the home button to get rid of that menu. We're now going to go to print trends, which is another way that we can access that vital signs trending window. This one we are going to print because it's not going to be as long as the treatment summary. So you're going to hit the enter key, find the roll of paper, press the roll of paper, and that will print out a trend of vital signs. Yes? When you bring that list up, is that different patients? Right? Yes, okay. it is. That's the storage file from the home button. Is there a way to look at their names on that or just the times? No names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and hit our home button, and I'm going to show you guys how to send it to the cloud so you guys can get it into your EPCR. All right, so do you guys all see the envelope? Go ahead and press the envelope. The first question is, do you want to close the case out? The answer is yes. Go ahead and hit enter. The next question is, do you want to select a case? The answer is yes. Go ahead and hit enter. Which case do you want? The newest one is up at the top. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Now the weird button push is you have to hit home to get to the transfer key. And then you're going to hit the enter. So home and then enter. And we're looking for a green light to pop up on the top of the device again. We're all working off of my cell phone right now. So it might be delayed or some might not get it to work at all because we're all fighting for my cell phone right now. So if you don't get a green light on the top of your monitor or it asks you to repeat it, that's okay. When it's done, it's going to give us a disclosure log complete. 
You'll just acknowledge it with an okay. It's probably going to, I'll just tell you guys, because we're using my cell phone, it's probably going to be really, really long. So if you guys want to cancel it out for the sake of time, we can cancel that out. It was really just important that you guys went through the button pushes for this. <laughs> Any questions at all? Okay, go ahead and hit your back arrow key twice. For those of you that have a rhythm generator, on the end of the rhythm generator, there is um, not the metal pigtail, but the plastic pigtail. If you can find the plastic pigtail and connect it to the notched end of the gray adapter. So if you leave the gray adapter on, there's a notched end with a lightning bolt. That's where you're gonna plug the pigtail into. We just have energy and we're done on this device. So is everybody that has a rhythm generator hooked into their rhythm generator with their defib cable? Okay. So again, if you guys want to share with each other, um, you're welcome to do so. We're going to go through the AED first. So on your rhythm generator, if you can find the V-fib button. So V-fib is going to be the top row, should be the first button on the rhythm generator. If you guys just press the analyze button and follow the directions, you can deliver the full charge. Stand clear. Stand clear. Does the gray end always clear. stay on that? You I can. Yeah. I like to leave no, it on. Yeah. Yep. So the end of the pass will get you on the Yep. Yeah, you'll leave that. I like to leave it on. Perform <laughs> CPR. Do we have our, our Who needs to deliver? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're not mm -hmm. No, 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 I'm not you two. I can just hear it beeping. I didn't know if somebody needed help. <laughs> no, you're fine. That's good. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. Okay, let's let me get your attention for just a moment because I think some people weren't sure about how to get into AED mode. So to get into AED mode, you're gonna hit the analyze button. That's going to put you into AED mode, okay? From there, you'll just follow the directions. So in adult mode, it's going to tell you to perform CPR. It might tell you to deliver a shock and so forth. Do you guys remember how to switch this into a pediatric device? Yes. Please do so and tell me what happens to your jewels. Anything you can highlight blue, there's something you can do. Attach pads. Very good. And purple. Yep. Fifty and purple was what I got from from the people I could hear up in the front. Perfect. Okay. Switch switch back to adult mode. Yeah, just one second. I want to make sure everybody gets what they need. <laughs> Are you guys asking about manual mode? 
We're going to get there in just a moment. If we could just hold off for just a minute, because we have another class coming in soon. Um, we, I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable with the AED part. How do we get into AED mode? Analyze. Analyze. Okay, here's the important part. How do we get out of AED mode? Yeah, you can either hit the exit button or your energy select button down. Okay. Jay and Glenn doing a rescue truck. I think I want trap down there. Joe's getting the rescue back together again. So. No, you guys are fine. Is it okay if we run over for the other group? Yeah, it's fine. It's okay? Okay, perfect. That's all I was... So we're hitting the... We're on um, analyzing mode. We're hitting the home button. It's doing nothing. It's making nothing. Correct. Home will not get you out of AED mode. Can you remind me of what it was? Yes. So exit. Exit. Okay, thank you. Oh, 1030? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Exit. I thought it was at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, great. So, do you guys want to run through that one more time just to be sure? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit analyze to get into AD mode. Attach You'll stand follow stand directions. Stand clear. Just so you know, we usually don't. Right, I was asked to teach on it. I just. Yep. Okay, now how do we get out of AD mode? Exit. Yep, there you go. And then everybody's comfortable going into pediatric mode? Okay. Do you guys have any questions for me about the analyze button? Since we're good on time, and my apologies, I thought it was at 10 o'clock, so that's why I was like getting a little anxious. I didn't want to make the other group wait, but do you guys need a bathroom break? We have energy left. Um, we have manual defibrillation, cardioversion, and pacing left in the CBR feedback. So if you guys need to get up, get a bathroom break, we have plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah, let's take, let's take five minutes. Stretch out. So we got through AED. Is everybody okay with the AED part? And then we took a little bit of a break. Okay. Yeah. So they just asked that we show you guys so you guys were aware that it's there. Um, particularly if you accidentally hit it, you need to bounce out of that. It's important to know how to get out. Um, we're going to get into manual defibrillation now. Manual defibrillation, you're just going to follow the one, two, three. Or are you guys 200 across the board for everything? 200. Okay, so you can just hit the charge button as long as you guys are at 200. You'll just hit the charge button twice. Just confirm that you're at 200. How long does it take before it dumps itself? 60 seconds. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. Go ahead and deliver the shot. So when you guys deliver, you're going to get a different number in green. <laughs> if you guys can deliver your energy or disarm it, please. Okay. So for those of you that were able to deliver, you asked for 200. You may have seen a different number in green. Yes. What did you guys get? 229. 229. 232. 232. Why isn't it listening to us? Did we break it already? We don't have the resistance of a person. No resistance. Go 
The resistance, okay. Very good, okay, so as the energy is traveling through the body, it's got to hit bone, tissue, muscle mass, adipose, all that good junk, right? So it is way smarter than me. It customizes the energy in the background for each patient so that it takes into account what that resistance or chest wall impedance may be. And it will deliver that energy so that you guys give the actual 200 that you asked for taking into consideration that resistance. So it'll document both. It's really for QA, QI purposes. You're gonna document the 200 or whatever jewel settings you gave. Everybody okay? All right, let's walk through disarming the device. So you'll hit your charge button. You have two ways to do it. Either hit the disarm button or hit your energy select button to disarm. Again, again, it's still gonna be again. energy. So you can either hit the disarm button on the right hand side, which is the third button down soft after you charge, or if you hit the other you select up or down, it will change energy to the disarm button. Right. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And you guys don't have a rhythm generator back here, oh, okay. though, right? Very good. Thank you for paying attention. Yeah. It's hard when you've got such a big group. I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you. Yes. It's not automatically charging when you push the charge. Right, you push it twice. You push it twice. Right, the reason you're pushing it twice is it's because it wants to confirm that that's the energy that you want to deliver. So that's why it's saying when you hit that charge button, the second time is a confirmation, yes, that's the jewel setting that I want. So if you press it twice, it starts going up and you hit energy down. It just It'll disarm. Is everybody comfortable delivering energy and disarming the energy? Yes. Okay. So if you guys are good with manual defibrillation, we're going to move into cardio version. Okay. Uh, physio is biphasic and they go up to 360 as well. I mean, so it just depends. Some, some biphasic do, this does go up to 360, some goes up to 200. This is dependent on our waveform, so this is proprietary. This waveform is different. Okay? You guys are currently using 200 though with your Philips. Yes. Yep. So it's the same thing, 200. Okay, we good with manual defibrillation? We can move on? Yes. All right, so on your rhythm generator, if you move one button push over to VTAC high, we're going to get into cardio version. You're going to press the sync button on the left hand side by the apps. You're going to get all your markers on the screen. Sync is going to be flashing on there as well. I don't know what your protocol is, so you're going to pick whichever jewels you want. When you go to deliver, the thing that's different about this is it will prompt you to press and hold the shock button to deliver because you're timing it at a specific point. So when you charge it, press and hold to deliver. So go ahead and do that. It won't because it's it's it could potentially damage. Yeah, it's a safety net. And, uh, you do. Um, if, if, I'll get to you in just a second. 
if your protocol, does your current device stay in sync mode? It does, so we can change that as a configuration. I just wasn't aware of that. Yes. I think he was asking a question here. He stole your question? I think so. That's not right. Yeah, we can change that in the configuration file. It can. Currently, it does not. It can. We can change the configuration. Thank you. To stay in sync. That's not a problem. It currently, I didn't put it like that, but I can change it. It should not default to in sync. It should default to out of sync. Because if the patient converts to a pulseless rhythm, it's going to be looking to sync on something it can't sync with. So you should manually have to sync. Okay. So we're going to leave it that way? Yes. Got it. That's just one soft piece. Yeah, it's not Yeah. Oh, okay, is everybody comfortable with the button pushes for cardioversion? Yes. This is uh, the last part of the energy, and then I have CPR feedback to show you, which I have to show you off of one device. <coughs> okay, so pacing on your rhythm generator, last row, last button is a third degree heart block, if you could move down to that. Okay, the pacer button, is a heads-up display. So the pacer button is a heads-up display. You're going to press the pacer button. The pacer goes up by 10, down by 5. It is a two-step process. The first step, turn the pacer on, so start pacing. Use your navigation keys to go to start pacer. That's step number one. Step number two is going to be your output. So to adjust your milliamps, you're going to slowly hit your arrow until you get a blue pacer spike in front of every green QRS. I'll give you guys a hint on the rhythm generators. It's somewhere around 70. If you're way above that, you may have hit the button pushes a little too quickly. Yes? Our default in protocol is starting at 80. No. Oh, okay, that's right, I forgot. So it might have to go up just a little bit. Sorry about that, I forgot. <laughs> You'll get a blue pacer spike in front of every green QRS. There's your yellow, but it looks like it's being So, first, before we go into that next section, is everybody comfortable getting to where we need to be for pacing? It goes up by 10, down by 5. Always remember to start your pacer first and then adjust your milliamps. Everybody good? Okay. So, we were just chatting about what happens if an electrode came, comes off of your patient, right? So on your current device, what happens? Defaults to fixed. Does it? Yeah, it just, just jumps right into fixed space. Really? I thought it shut off. Okay. It, we, when we have physio, it did. Okay. On the current one, it switches. It switches, good. So that's what this is gonna do. It has that safety net built in. So if you guys pull an electrode off, one of your four leads off right now, you can mimic that. So it's going to show that it's going to override in fixed mode so you don't lose capture. Well, no, it will not. So the question, just so, so we're all, and I'll get to everybody in just a second. One of the questions was, 
if the leaf comes off, you can still see the picture because it's reading off the pads. No, not with pacing. With pacing, the four leaf shows the picture, the pads deliver the energy in demand mode. If something catastrophic happens and you lose an electrode, it then says, you know what, I can't see the picture anymore, but I know the orders that you gave me. I'm going to keep marching so I don't lose capture for you. So it's going to read off of the pads and be in fixed mode as a safety net. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. If you put it back on, it'll default back to what you had it set to. It also looks like it tells you up and it gives you a yellow bar and tells you that it switches to fixed when you pull it off. It does. It tells you that it switched over to fixed mode. Did that answer everybody's questions, or was there still a question out in the audience still? Any other questions at all about the pacing? No, I, I just wanted to note the way that you see it, or at least looking at their monitor, when you take a lead off, it doesn't change like the where it says mode, it still says demand, but above it, it's in blue, it says change to fix. Correct. Think of the bottom dash. Yeah. As your orders. Okay, so it's, okay, so that's your orders. Hey, this is what you're in, but the top is saying something came off. We're still doing it, but you should fix that. Correct. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions at all? Okay. I have CBR feedback to show you guys, and then we're done. Before I get into that, do you guys have any questions for me about anything that we talked about today? Yes. Does this thing have any way to mark events of any type? It does. So. Oh. Yeah, we went already. We did that. Actually, she went over that. That's okay. Let me show you again. Do I need to be quiet? Is there? A... No, you're good. Okay. So. Can somebody zoom in for the next session. Ah. Uh, if you take a look at the left side of your device, you're going to find the back arrow keys. Remember that scrolls through the apps on your phone. So if you find the white cross, you get a total of 10 code or event markers, and those are all customizable. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So in the upload to um, EMS charts, does that transfer into add action automatically or just into the free text? I'm not sure. Uh, it's something we'll have to pay attention to, guys. It's, to yeah, there. and it might just be on the administration side to see those permissions um, get get put through. How do you clock sync? Who? Clock sync? Yeah. Who asked about that? I did. Oh, the clock sync is based off of the Wi Fi. Okay. So um, when it connects to the time server, it should adjust. How much is that? Microsoft Time. I know the answer to that. I'm just curious. I'm going to put that to the next lawsuit. Two minute barriers. Microsoft says. Well, uh, believe me, I assure you. I assure you the fact that it's sinking is way better than what we're doing. Yeah. All right. So the CPR feedback is what I'm going to get into next. While I'm setting that up, if you guys don't have any questions, will you please power down your rhythm generator, power down your devices, and if you could roll up your cables and hoses so that they go back into your device. And if you can take your batteries out, I'm going to set this up to show you guys, and we'll have you guys on your way. You have, where are the defects? I don't have a set of defects. Do we have them yet? What? Uh, our, our shipment didn't make it. I have a set here. I do, yeah. I got the picture. They already got it. He's
inside of your device if you'd like to so it's just something to think about so it's got the picture on here on the front but it's a little deceptive because on this pad which I'm going to open up in just a second the picture showing that the puck stays attached and that's not the case when you open it up you've got to separate it So your set of pads looks like this, red and purple, okay? This is perforated. You're going to tear the puck away, okay? The puck is going to go exactly like the picture shows you, but it's just going to be separated, basically where your hand will be for compressions. Do you guys do front and back or anterior, anterior, just like this? Okay, perfect. And I'll leave that out if anybody wants to look at that afterwards. So this is basically what the CPR puck is going to give you. And I don't have it facing me, so I'm going to try my best to keep in time with it. But this is an accelerometer, so it measures this going up and down. Okay? So as we start to do our compressions, the first five to eight compressions are free. There's my dashboard. The first number is the depth. The next number is the rate. The bar should go up to the top. That's my recoil velocity, how fast I'm coming off the chest. The diamond is the perfusion to the heart. 
and then I get a clock above it to tell me when to switch out compressors. I want to treat this like a video game. I want to keep the numbers green and the diamond filled. If the number goes yellow, push harder. I make the correction. Good compression. Those are features that just help with your CPR compression. The number goes yellow, it can give you an audible feedback as well. You'll, you're here gonna hear the metronome kick on only when I'm not at the right rate. The next piece of information this will pull is the underlining rhythm. So through a compression, we can filter out about 90% of the artifact to give you the underlining rhythm so that we encourage you to stay on the chest and pre-charge. If I'm at my last 10 seconds, I'm gonna pre-charge, continue compressions. I wanna come off the chest, is that V-fib? Yes, everybody clear, deliver.